I'm Paul Suggett. Filmmaker, adventurer, broadcaster and company director. And I'm used to living a very fast-paced lifestyle. I'm at a point in my life where I have everything I need. And for the last few years, I've dedicated my time to helping those less fortunate than myself by raising awareness of situations that often get overlooked or ignored. Over the course of six weeks, I made myself homeless to film a documentary of what life is like living on the streets. From turf wars, violence between the homeless, violence towards the homeless, true stories from homeless people on how they manage to live day to day, and the reaction to the homeless from the public, Like you fucking like here. stand down. Here, don't start standing my bro for the night. Living on the streets is very tough. The reality is we're all just a couple of paychecks or bad decisions away from being homeless ourselves. Could you handle it if it happened to you? After a cold and restless night, I hit the street of Middlesbrough and it wasn't long before I was approached by a homeless guy trying to make a few pounds to get himself a hot cuppa and something to eat. I've got my own mattress and that here. I've got my bed in everything. The government don't help you. So how long have you actually been here then, John? In, in, in this? Because you've got the land, you've got the land on the Yeah, I've been here for about six months now. On here? Six months, yeah. And uh, how, how, long, how long have you been homeless for in total? Well, total, well, I was married for like 33 years, but we've separated all the time. I've been to London, I've been to Blackpool, Scotland. She keeps me out all the time. Hey, I'm always on the streets. Just here, I'm gonna go down my sleeping bag. But this is where I sleep every night. I suppose you've got a roof over your head, really, haven't you? Yeah. So what's, what's gonna happen after COVID then when this when this reopens, oh, do you have to find somewhere I'll else? I'll have then? to find somewhere else to sleep and that because I'll have nothing. I'll be back out in a shop doorway, something like that. Meeting you there, John, you said you haven't had a, a meal for a couple of, a couple uh, of Three nights. days, three days. You're homeless, you've got no access to TV or anything like that. So how do you find out about lockdown rules and... Uh, just people tell me the information, they'll speak to them on the streets. And have you found it harder through COVID being homeless for people say, you know, when oh. you go tapping for well, instance? It's, it, well, if I go out and tap a few pennies and that, but now all the shops are closed and all that, so then there's not many people coming out because they're all staying indoors. Yeah. So then you can't make nothing. How do you try and make ends meet so you can get a drink, a cup of coffee or something like that? Are you just oh. relying on... It's just uh, donations, but with me having family in that down in Middlesbrough, I try to keep out the way because I don't want to see them because I can't see them. 
So it put more pressure on me. You mentioned you, you know, you have, you have a drink. Is that to, to numb the pain or? It is just to, to, to end me sleep. That's all it is. Just to help me sleep and then I've got to sleep, then just wake up and it's, it gets worse the following day because memories are still there and I was here till about half past five this morning then I just went outside of Iceland where I seen you yeah. and because I just slept in here but half past five I went out trying to make a couple of pounds so I can get a drink. I don't make no plans. Never make a plan because if you make a plan it all just goes pear shaped. I can't go up to the village because the wife lives up there and where you got the, the pig iron, the pub, the dog lives there, so I'm stuck. So I'm stuck right in the middle, really. But like I say, the government don't give you out or not. Because they're saying oh, all the drive funding has gone up, but this Boris Johnson is giving billions of pounds away. Where's he? Help the homeless? He's not. In the time I've been in Middlesbrough, I've, <coughs> I've seen homeless people who aren't homeless. But they're not homeless, they just go out to and make the money for the drugs. Yeah. Then they go back, they've got places to live. But what they're doing, they stand next to the cash machines and people go to the cash machines. And it's it's putting people off to get their own money out. Yeah. And whereas you're genuinely homeless. Well, as you can yeah, see, as you can yes. see. <laughs> this is my home. <laughs> Given John's situation, I reached out to a friend and homeless charity director, Jamie Horton, to see if she can help. Oh, I forgot to do one thing as well, to tell you, I'm an alcoholic. Sorry. I've, got, I've got a bottle of whiskey here, yeah. I'll drink it. Name's Jamie Horton, I'm ringing from Positive Helpful Outcomes North East. I've actually came across a gentleman called John He's actually sleeping homeless under the outside shelter on a mattress with sleeping bags. I wonder if there's any assistance you can give him, please. Yeah, you're with him now? I certainly am, yeah. I'm going to take him just now to go and give him a, a charger for it so we can get some charge on it for him. Um, so, But he's with me at the moment, so you can actually ring me back on this number. No problem, Jenny. Leave him with me. I'll pass it over to our office next yeah. Um, I'm about to now give you a call back shortly, okay? Right, you're fantastic. Thank you, darling. Bye. Thank you for your help. Bye-bye. Bye. Later that day, Jamie received a call back from the Out of Hours Homeless team that would severely impact John. John, I'm just telling you what I've been told, mate. We can't, we can't offer you any temp accommodation and you're going to have to ring the council on Monday morning for Oh, uh, well, well, fuck you then. Hey, so that's what they meant there. The council is not letting the homeless out on the street. You put people in shit holes like and you get robbed. That's what the fucking homeless have to live on. I know. Shit like this. With freezing temperatures, John has to survive another weekend homeless until he can speak with the council again on Monday. How long have you been homeless then? On and off for 38 years. So this guy he has been homeless on and off for 38 years. And so do you do you prefer life on the street or would you rather have accommodation or oh, I'd rather have accommodation but I can't, can't get it. It's not that I can't get it. My mental health sort of keeps me out of it, you know. I suffer badly with uh, when I go into a room and the door shuts. Claustrophobia, yeah. It's, I mean, I'm going to live. I'm fine. Yeah. It, it's just when I'm in, you know. I, I just have to be out. Yeah. I feel more at ease out here now. I've, I've done it that long, you yeah. know. So where do you sleep on a night then? It varies, usually down in the Tesco doorway down the town, because it's set right back and down the wind. Right. Know. Do you get much trouble on the street on a night at all? Or? Or do people know you are now and yeah, leave you to it? People know me and 
you know, the yeah. of leave me alone, really. Help yeah, yeah. Now and again, you know, I don't ask him, don't ask anybody for anything. Now. Yeah. Well, I used to. Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. You've been in my house at least 50 times, right, right wrong? I was here, here. Yeah. I've got no money. I'm skinned. I'm skinned, lad. You know what I mean, bro? Is that what it is? I'm skinned. Put that in your pocket, kid. Put that in your pocket, bro. Yeah, put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket, Mickey, lad. How many times I give you a tenner? How many? It's not about this. It's a me, bro. I'm from the border. I'm from the border. Well, me fella, yeah. This is me fella. Yeah. He's your only son. He's free. I've never... I couldn't walk past this guy here. I was saying hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I swear no, I wouldn't say no. I'm fucking free. He's done the same for me. Here. Shut up. Becca. Like, you fucking... Like, here. Calm down. Here. Don't start slagging my brother from front of me. I'm not slagging your brother. What have you got to say about him? Because his girlfriend will come down and break you all over. I'm not saying that, but I'm not saying that. Who the fuck do you think you are, by the way? Is this your lass? Tell her keep your mouth shut. Listen, mate, no, I, I don't tell, tell her what to do, mate. You, mate? I don't, mate. I said it's like your brother. Yeah, how are you, baby? Come yeah. on. Listen, they want us to walk this way. Go. You've got a problem with me. I've got a problem with you. Things were really heating up on the street, and my security team took the decision to take us out of the situation. I don't know. I don't know him. He's worked this ticket there, though. I was going to smack him, me. I was filming, but I can't do that. I'll go to jail. No, it's I'll not worth it. It's not worth it. Later that evening, the couple who were caught up with the trouble in the high street agreed to tell me their story. Lights, camera, action. Who, who's, who's the artist then out to you? Me. To be fair, that lass. She's got it in her. I said me. No, yeah, but obviously I can't hit a woman, so I just have to let her beat me up, <laughs> innit? Innit? He's calling me a mum beater. Before I even moved in here, I'd never heard of 2020. Um, 2020 group it's called, on Borough Road, is that right? Mm -hmm. On Borough Road, and uh, there's like four people in this building. Basically, they've used one house and like, done what they can to get like get people in it. Like, a little bathroom in each room and that. More. House of multiple occupancy. Every time I've come out of prison, I, they, they ask you to work with through, uh, shelter. What uh, were you in prison for? Um, just for thefts and stuff like that. Like, joke me drug addiction. Yeah. So... I like, that's what all my jail's been through all my life. You know what I mean? And I've, yeah. I've done, maybe done about 10 years in, like, in jail, like through all my drug addictions. I used to work with shelter and I've never ever come out and been given somewhere. I'm literally left on, your t left on my tod. You walk out them gates and that's it. You do what you've got to do, you know what I mean? So obviously then you lead back onto the streets, you lead back around your old mates, you're back on the drugs. It's just a 20, it's like a big circle, isn't it? It's a merry-go-round. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Are you, are you on drugs now? Me? No, I'm clean. Clean? Well, well clean, yeah. How long have you been clean for? Me? Over a year. Because, yeah. like, with all the jail I've done as well, like, and then since I've come out... It's been over, hard. Over a year. But we've done it. But I think we help each other, don't we? Yeah. Well, I. Definitely. And do you know what it is, like, probation and all that, like, they were saying, it was honestly, they were saying... They didn't oh, want us together. Some yeah, you so together, it was just going to be like, boom, you're like, you're going to kick off, you're going to go do this, do that. You'll both be back in jail. But we're just proving them wrong, innit? When you say both back in jail, Becca, yeah. Yeah. you've done jail time as well. I have, yeah, I've done quite a few sentences, yeah. And what what kind of, what's the cause of your jail time? Um, mainly shop thefts, like due to my addictions in my past, um, all to get money to, to, to fund that. Rabbit. Free yeah. rabbit, um, I feel amazing now, like, thank you. Are you, no, are no, you clean as well now? I am, yeah. And how long have you yeah. been clean for? It's only been about three months. Do, do you know what? Well done. Well done, though. To start, isn't it? Now, you found yourself homeless as well, out, coming out of prison. I did, yeah. It wasn't this sentence. It was my last jail sentence when I come out. Um, I was living in Middlesbrough, but because I had no ties at all to the Middlesbrough area, um, they just wouldn't help me. Um, my my ex-partner lived in Middlesbrough, um, and he was homeless as well. So we just found ourselves on the streets um, and they just wouldn't help me at all. It's been the same for me, like no ties to Middlesbrough, they won't help you. And then yeah. when you try to go to Redka, they're saying, well, they don't want to fund you because you're in Middlesbrough. It's like, I was, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, like, it's hard. Do you know what I mean? They know there's houses empty and there's people on the streets and they're not putting them in. There's four rooms in here. There's all these buildings and rooms available for them. Why are these people on the street? I seen an old fella yesterday called John. I said to you, didn't I? And you said you might know him. Old fella called John. He's an old fella. 
Like, I told him, I told him what he does, I don't know if he has a drink or something, do you know what I mean? But he's not a drug addict or out. He's on the streets, he's an old fella. And he was like carrying his sleeping bag, he was freezing. I know there are some homeless people who've become that accustomed to it in their life that they just don't want to change anymore. I have it's... met a few people like that, yeah, and they're happy just making the money on the streets and maybe getting the drugs and that and then going back where to, where, to wherever. I don't think they want that, but it's just what they're used to, isn't it? It's like, it's like people who are in jail get institutionalised. Do you know what I mean? Once again, a familiar name crops up in the conversation. Yeah, my mum messaged yeah. me and she was like, listen, I've, uh, I've heard of a lass called Jamie Orton. Um, she's just got someone who's homeless on, like, got him somewhere to stop. And then it all started from there. I think I messaged her. It just, like, set off from there and, like, wow, she was on fire. Like, she'd done more than everybody else I've worked with, probation, my key workers and all that. She'd done more than everyone. And she doesn't even get paid for it. She's a volunteer. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, and she keeps in touch, like, a few times a week, asking how, how yeah. he's doing. Not, well, just, I... not just him, but me as well. I think this universal credit makes it harder for people as well, because now they're on a monthly payment. And sometimes it's five weeks on the universal credit. It's not, yeah, it it's not a fortnightly you know daily I mean? payment that it used to be. It's like five weeks sometimes. Yeah. If you're homeless, you can't go shopping and get a month shopping and put it away. Like, you're on the street, so... The whole reason for this documentary is just to try and show the public that there's a forgotten entity in the world, the yeah. homeless people. It blows your mind, you know what I mean? When you, when you meet them and they're all nice and, that and how polite they are. But some of them just need a good bath. And, <laughs> yeah. and just a, a couch to sleep on with a fluffy blanket. Where do you guys see yourselves, let's say, in three months' time? Three months' time, hopefully out of here in my own place. Together? Like, maybe our own place together. She might get somewhere or I might get somewhere. And then once we get somewhere decent, we're going in together. We're going to go together. Isn't it? So I'm kind of in a homeless place in a B&B &B in Redka. Um, they're trying to get me somewhere. Um, and if I get somewhere, then Martin's going to come with me, yeah. and vice versa. After meeting up with Martin and Becca, it was time to hit the streets again and start to look for a place to bed down for the night. You alright, son? So what have you got there? A chip and a wrap of some sort. Alright, let's go and get the homes guy there. I can't give you any money, but there's some food for you, darling. You're welcome. Enjoy it. There's a wrap in there and there's some chips in there. Get rid of it because it's lovely and hot, right? Yeah. All right, buddy. Yeah, well, you take well, care. Stay safe. Having left the homeless guy to enjoy his food, it wasn't long before the verbal abuse started again. Anything to get on camera, lads, eh? Yeah, that's you, isn't it? Yeah, cheers, isn't it, guys? Crack on. And this is what they have to put up with, people like this, just caught and giving abuse out. It's an everyday occurrence. Every day. Everyday occurrence. I find it hard for somewhere to, where, to bed down for the night here. It's just, just everywhere you go, it's either you know, really, really degrading. Fucking hell, look at this. God. Absolutely stinks of weed and fish and piss. I'm not stopping here tonight, it stinks of pissed too much. There could be needles or anything. I mean, looking at this here, there's a lot of aluminium foil here. Now that's going to be one or two things isn't it? People are going to use it to keep themselves warm with or probably for paraphernalia and you can see it over there there's remnants of things here so my guess is they're using that to cook the drugs up with. There's a remnant of a needle over there. Yeah I'm gonna get out of this place this just is not cool here. Covid it's causing so many people just to lose their livelihoods. It's causing them to lose everything. There's another needle top there. Um, it's causing them to lose absolutely everything. And this could happen to any one of us at any time. You lose your job, you lose your livelihood, you lose your home, and then all of a sudden, if you haven't got that support mechanism there, you could end up on the streets. 
and just trying to find somewhere that gives me shelter for the night is proven tough. It really is. You've got a what? Three bedrooms now, 100 pounds a night. 100 pound a night, flipping it, I've got 100 pound. So is that your life in there? It's a day's life. I'm now calling by the way. There's a sleeping bag. What's happened, what's happened to you since Covid? There's not many people out now on the streets, is there? It's Covid, you want to see me blood? The what? You want to see me cough? No. Because it's cough and blood. Are you? Yeah. Have you had Covid, like? No. No. I'm too scared to go for the test. Yeah. Well, I, I don't blame you there, mate. I don't blame you. <coughs> Careful, fella. Yeah. Blood test. Blood test. Blood test. Blood Ugh. It always gets me when I see somebody spit. After unsuccessfully trying to find a new place of shelter for the night, I return to a place that's become home on many nights in Middlesbrough, as it feels safer and cleaner to bed down here. Tell you what, I've literally come out of the way of Middlesbrough because if you're not getting moved on, yeah, there's you're around people there. The homelessness seems to be like a turf war, a turf battle. Half of them um, seem to be numbing the pain with drugs, and you don't know whether you're talking to them and speaking to somebody earlier on, really nice and pleasant, and then within a split second, they're a completely different person and I didn't fancy a night of that either because truthfully I wouldn't get no sleep so I've come out the way, there's a couple of horses in the fields around there I hope they don't get out during the night um, but this doorway seems comfortable, it's out the wind it's raining a bit but I'm, uh, I'm dry for now which is good Today I've taken the decision to move on from Middlesbrough. I'm feeling more and more uneasy living on the streets here. And with word spreading among the homeless community of my documentary team following me around from time to time, along with the volatility between the homeless, it's time to move on. I've arrived in Hartlepool. Another town in Teesside that has its fair share of homeless people. Many of who go undetected as they're not registered homeless and they simply do not exist according to the authorities. First things first, I need to establish a safe place to sleep for my first night living on the streets of Hartlepool. Today I'm meeting up with Jamie Horton from Positive Helpful Outcomes North East. 
and she's going to show me how to find food for myself, as up till now I've relied on the generosity of the public to feed me. So, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you down here. This is one of the prime examples of where people go to right. go bin rummaging. You, you tend to look for places with shops that you know sell food or the likes of your Salvation Army, your charity shops and that, because you know then you're going to might be able to get clothes or something that you might be able to sell on yeah. as well. The likes of the, the trolley with the, the thing in, that, that scrap, someone can make money from that. Right, yeah. You know, and then you've got like the likes of the Sally Army right now, you know, there's bins. It, we're not even supposed to be here, but we're here. You know, we'll have a look in, see what's actually in there. See, there's so rubbish what, people bags. just throw commercial waste in here and... Yeah, commercial waste. Um, well, you can see there's... So, yeah. They're still in date, you can eat them. Right. You're putting them in your bag. Right, OK. So I'll not just take a couple and just leave them for, for other people, or...? Oh, if you want to, there's a couple of bananas here. They're a bit... Yeah, fuck. There's, I'd, yeah, come yeah. here, man. Stop being a fanny. Look, there's fuck all wrong with it, mate. Don't judge the outside. You know that saying? Don't read a book by its cover. There's nothing wrong yeah, with it's it. It's absolutely spot on. Fucking edible. Have a look. Come on, here. Are you all right there, Paul? Don't waste it. <sighs> the thought of it it's just the thought of it oh yeah yeah look <sighs> fuck apples <laughs> You're really not gonna fucking survive out here, are you, mate? <sighs> Paul? Ah, fuck. It's your first bin, mate. Let's be fair. Uh, I didn't realise. Uh, I didn't realise it was like this. And I tell you what. Ah, uh, fuck. I've a new appreciate. Uh, I've a new appreciation for people having to do this day in, day out. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> it's hard. Very hard. Uh, this is tough. And, and you know, hats off. Can't even think about it. Hats off to everybody who's uh, able to do this. I suppose needs must, aren't they? You know? Yeah. It's just the smell of the bin. It's the smell of the bin as well. Oh my god. Oh, fuck. You're gonna be alright? Yeah. The sound of me retching and the presence of the cameras soon attracted attention. They're doing a documentary on me. I don't. Yeah. So I've got out, mate. I've got out. Have you come to get your method on? Yeah. How long have you um like being dependent like on drugs and stuff and oh good yeah since i was 17 i'm 49 now oh yeah yeah so it's roughly the same age as me like you know what i mean thereabouts yeah the fuck's he doing i'll show you all your fucking dick you're not a fucking it was not needed mate yeah. none of that was needed well, actually, he's illegally parked anyway. Now, Honestly, mate, right, right we've... Problem, right. Hey, yeah. You better get yourself off your double yellows. Yeah. All right. All right, on your way. On your way. Talking to people, your mouth's giving it that. Get out the car. How are you, bud? Bud. How are you? Come on. Oh, come over here with us. How are you? You're all right over here. On the fucking car. Dick nobody. That's what you're fucking do. Are we round here, bud? I'm right. having them talking to you like that. Thanks a lot, bud. I massively appreciate that. I massively appreciate that. But here, are you all right with us talking to you on this? Because I can maybe get your story out there for people to... Right, yeah. And if they see you, they might help you out more. Yeah. Are you all right with that?
Yeah. See them there, giving it the big one. Yeah. The fucking clown. I'd tear strips of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I grew up on the fucking streets, you know what I mean? I grew yeah. up in the school of hard knocks. He's just a fucking clown, him. How long yeah. have you been in Scott Grange for? About 14 months. But I've been in, in and out of prison. I've just got back out of prison on the 29th of the last month. And they kept me place for me, so... Oh, wasn't even, that was really nice of them. Yeah. So, have you seen Patrick in there, have you? Patrick? Yeah, he's in the crash pad. Oh, well, I was, I was talking to Patrick. Well, I've got him in the crash pad. Yeah. How long were you up? Have you been, were you homeless for? I was homeless for four years. Were you? Yeah. Where were you sleeping in this time? Did you ever present yourself homeless at the... Civic? Loads of times. So uh, what happened? They, 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 do you know something? The, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being racist or nothing, but they put the immigrants in the hotels and the leave us on the streets. And, that, and that's the way it is. And that, and that, and that is the way it is. Because of Covid, right, do you think they've been helping you a little bit more? Because obviously they've got additional funding to be able to, to help. No, no, they're putting us out. Because they said we, 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 we've got unruly behaviour, they said, but it's not, it's not what it is. I won't let nobody take advantage of me. And I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will not let people take the piss out of me. And the people in there know that. So they needle me and needle me till I, till I bite. You know, well, as you say, it doesn't take a lot for me to bite, but the people like that are just... No, like them in there, they're, they're just divvies or, or lemon in there, and that's got range. It's, I don't know, if we get lit back there late, sometimes they don't like letting us in. So you've got but, to sleep out? Yeah, but it's a, it's, it's a roof, you know, and I've got, I've got a nice little, I've got one of the big front room flats, it's a big bay window and that, you know what I mean, it's, it's okay, it's alright. It's alright. As long as you've been looked after, that's that's oh, the main yeah, thing. Yeah, Because the weather's if we shit. Ever long for, if we ever look go along food, well, before this COVID, the US help us out with, with Scran. Yeah. Because of this COVID, the the the, the, the thingy round, the Patrick Round Roundtree Foundation, they used to help us a lot. Yeah. But because of this COVID, the, the, they can't come in. Because the house is on lockdown. Yeah, of course. We'll be warned. Yeah, we, can't have, we can't have no visitors on house. Do you think? Do you think you're getting the help you need, though? Oh yeah, yeah. It's get, it is getting. I was about to say it, it's getting better, but slowly. <laughs> do you know what I love about homeless people? Is the fact that despite the despite the shit, despite, yeah, despite the shit you're going through, you still have the audacity to be so quite brazen. Never, and, never lose the banter. Never lose it. Dick, I mean, I don't know, yeah, but some people have made it in life, haven't yeah. they? You know, yeah. it's a uh, fair shout. Hey, it's good to meet you, bud. Yeah, and you. My, my name's Mick. I'm Paul. Crowbar, and Nick. Nice one. I'll probably see you around town. Yeah, got you, bud. Yeah. Look after yourself. After bidding Mick farewell, I took some much needed time to reflect on how much of an impact being homeless is having on me before heading back to the safety of my outdoor squat for the evening. Another day on the streets of Hartlepool and today my intention is to try and make a couple of quid to fund a coffee and some food as I don't fancy the prospects of rummaging through bins again. First things first though, I need the loo and desperately need to freshen up. So this is the only way that you can actually get a wash and um, have a wee and uh, number two if you need one. It's by actually finding uh, open public toilets. Um, these ones are kind of blocked off because of COVID and, uh, you know, it makes it difficult. But uh, at least it's a place where I can just get on now and uh, give me balls a good scrub. I 
I was just getting settled, but didn't realise I'd already been observed on CCTV, and it wasn't long before the town centre security moved me on. I wasn't causing any problems, I was merely sitting there. The town centre, it seems, has a zero tolerance of homeless people. Grange for control. Let's move on that corner, Paul. Public place, and you're on. You're in the public side of it now, so that's all right. This is what, honestly, right, guys. This is what we're up against against the homeless. This is what we're up against. We're homeless people. See, this is the reaction you get all the time. You you get people, security, everybody just want to push you away from society. It's terrible, absolutely terrible, it really is. But this is the reality of stuff. People just pushing you away, no matter what. <clears throat> So that is what happens to homeless. People just do not give you a chance at all. I've just literally been ushered from there to there and because you guys are here, all of a sudden it's a big problem. It's what we're up against. And the beauty of this, I'm seeing this first hand. I'm seeing it first hand for this documentary, how bad humans are to each other. When somebody's down on their luck, you're met with that. Terrible, absolutely terrible. It's fucking honestly, it's shocking. I've just experienced something there where I've just felt like I'm the lowest of the low. You feel, you, you just feel like you're, you're fucking nothing, you know, absolutely fucking nothing, just worthless. And they, by their reactions and the way they go on, if I wasn't in sound mind, that could probably play with my mind. And you just start thinking, what's the fucking point? Just give up. And external parties are causing that to happen. Hashtag furious right now. Thank you, my darling. Thank you. I've just had a, a Facebook message off one of my friends saying that there's a homeless man over by Wilco, so I've just been and grabbed him a cup of coffee and I'm heading over there now to go and see who he is. Oh my Lord, I can't believe it's you. <laughs> Honest to God, right? I've just had, here, I'll show you. Can't believe you're still out here, mate. I've got a quid. Hey, do you want a brew? I've just had a Facebook message telling me, hey Jamie, I've just bumped into this homeless guy, Dan Wilkinson's. He said his name is Paul. Can you come and give him, can you come have a look? And there's a picture of him. You're famous, mate. You have made <laughs> Facebook, right? I can't believe you're fucking still out here, mate. How are you doing? All right. Been out, been, out, been out doing this a while now. I understand now how the homeless must actually feel. You can understand why they're just giving up, why they're hitting the drugs, why they're hitting the um, the drink, just to try and just numb it. Because tomorrow, it's going to happen again. And then the day after and the day after. Well, please, you've come out anyway. You have got the charity, yeah. Positive Helpful Outcomes North East. How, how would your charity help me out right now? If you didn't know me, I'm a new kid on the block in the homeless scene. How would your charity actually help me out? Well, obviously we work through word of mouth. Quite a lot of our referrals come through word of mouth um, or through other organisations contacting us. Uh, like today, it was via a Facebook post telling me there's a new guy on the street. I'd, I'd obviously come out and I'd, I'd sit here and torture. I don't pretend to be anything that I'm not. I'm not local authority. I'm just an everyday normal person coming out to see if you're all right. Talk to you like you're a human being. You're not a piece of shit on my shoe. You are a human being at the end of the day, regardless of your circumstances of why you are in this situation. I'd obviously, I'd want to know a little bit about you, where you're from, what your name is, your age, date of birth, have you got any drug dependencies and stuff like that. All of this information is utilised because when we gather this information, it helps us determine whether we need to have anybody else involved from the outside agencies that we work with. So how could you help me and get me the help I need? Because if I needed accommodation now, I don't want to spend another night 
homeless. Home. I would kickstart that by, I would pick up my phone, I would ring the out of hours homeless team here in Hartlepool to let them know, look, I've came across a homeless guy. He's sat here, he's sleeping in the Wesley. It's not safe for him to be sleeping there. I came into this with a mindset of, uh, most of these homeless aren't even homeless. Well, a lot of these homeless are. There is a few I've met who aren't, and they're just getting money each day. But for the majority, they are homeless and I know you're connected with them to try and get them accommodation, to try and yes. get them sorted out. And for me, I would I would want to find out, but again, if I'm homeless, I can't afford a mobile phone or anything, so relying on people outreaching to me Absolutely. is probably the best way. Whilst chatting with Jamie Horton, my new street friend and homeless ally Mick turned up on his wander around the town and he began talking to my production team. Hey, bud. Security just kicked us out of here. Do you want to walk through with me? Go and kick me out. I'll tell them to fuck off. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right, mate. Just, Hiya. Yeah. You fucking, if anything, all right. You can understand why homeless people just feel fucking flattened, don't they? You know what I mean? They just, they just feel fucking worthless because of people, yeah. people like that. Been speaking to me daughter this morning on the phone. Oh, nice one, bud. Yeah. Oh, I feel dope. Yeah. yeah, sit down here. Sit down here a couple of minutes, please, are I was crying in that this morning, you know. Yeah. Fair shout, mate. Fair shout. I'm Mick. Born and bred in Arctic Pole. I've had, a, I've had a rough old life, but I'm a fighter, I'm a survivor, I'm still here. You're out of that, son. You're yeah. out of that. I'm, I'm no hard case. I'm quiet. I keep myself to myself. But you're taking no shit from people who are just fucking casting you aside. No, no. Him and the out in the, in, in in the, the Mercedes. The Red Merc. And, the, and these people, the, the, they're getting these stories. Yeah, getting your story. Out. Here, yeah, they get our story across, and, and, and all they're doing is good things for us. Yeah, you know there's absolutely I mean? nothing bad out of this. But then, like you say, you get you get these people in here, yeah, and they just get out, sort of thing. Get, yeah. And all I was doing was just sat around this corner there. You're on private property. Get off. We've got every right to be here, as much as the next man who's got a pocket full of money who's paying. I know. Even though we've got no money in our pockets, our hearts are like lions. Yeah. You know? Absolutely, you, you bud. You know what I mean? Absolutely, bud. Yeah, and, that, and that's, 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 that's where I'm coming from. Do you know where it is? If you've got money and, 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 you've, got a, and you've got a good tongue in your head, they all fire. But if you've got an out about you, the, the services in this town they diabolical. They don't want to know you, uh, and, uh, and they cut you dead. It's good to see you again, man. Yeah, and you, man. Cheers, man. It's good to see you again. Okay, yeah. I'll see you around the cell. You know what I mean? That's right. for me, that Thank you. Hey, tell you. Tell you what we'll do. We'll go half seat. I've got, I've got one in there. There's one for you, mate. Sure. There's one for you. Come here, man. We've got one each. That's fair, isn't it? There. Oh. We're not this one. We've got one each. Well, me and you're going to bump into each other again. We are. We're going to be on the circuit, mate. I'm going to see you around. Yeah, man. Without a doubt. Hopefully. We will. Yeah. Look after yourself. Take no shit from people like these. You know, I don't take shit, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. Good lad. Right. Right. Now give us your camera. I'm robbing you. <laughs> see you later. During past conversations, Jamie Horton mentioned that she'd secured accommodation for the homeless through a charity. So today, I'm going to check these homes out. So this is going to be a potential new home for someone starting out. How are you going to help get this furnished out? Given, like you said, it's just been plastered, there's, there's a lot of work to do by looks of We'll go and have a wander around it. Yeah, we'll have a wander around it. What do you do? Do you just get volunteers to come and help and everybody pitch in? See, I've had people from far as Sheffield wow. offer me stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's a case of, if it's good stuff, we get a van and we go pick it up and fetch it back. Because we're constantly rehoming people and constantly need furniture for them. You know, it's okay give them a house, but they need everything to go in it. There's still some things that need to be cleaned and done, but It'll take a couple of hours to clean it, a couple of hours to paint it, get all the shit out of it. Whilst this property needs a bit of work doing to it, 
Once complete, it's going to make a great home for somebody starting out. I'm thinking about putting Martin and Becca in here. Oh, from Middlesbrough? Yeah. yeah. Um, to be able to then, obviously they're going to have a family home then, so then we'll be able to try and to, once everything's kind of in place and they're engaging with everyone, that they'll then be able to, maybe be able to have supervised contact, unsupervised contact with the aim for actually having sleepovers with their own children. This property is a palace compared to the next home Jamie took me to. This next property is effectively a shell and needs some serious work doing to it in order to make it habitable. As you can see Paul, the, the rafters have all been stripped out. Um, when we took on the property from uh, the lady, we established that it actually had asbestos in it. Wow. Um, and £2,500 later, we've had all of the asbestos stripped. So how much it cost to shift it? It did, yeah. Two and a half um, grand. Yeah, it had to be specially done. Wow. Uh, special container skips and everything, and then they came in and actually swept it out. It did have needles in it. It had been reused as a drug den previously by occupants. As you can see, the doors and windows had been smashed and broken into. It had already been stripped before we were given the property. What a shame. You can see as you're looking around, the floorboards are up. That's where all the old copper piping was. Everything's I mean, out. There's a little bit of copper piping left, but I wouldn't even break into a property for what's left. Literally, the gas boilers piping, the lot was all ripped out. The electric cabling. This is the only bit of cable and that's actually left in the house. There's certainly a lot to do in getting this property fixed up. However, once done, it'll make another great home. The final property Jamie took me to had recently been broken into and had become a dumping ground for people's rubbish, as it's widely known as an unoccupied property at present. As with any unoccupied property, they kind of end up being a dumping ground. When I was here last time, that uh, there was resemblance of a cannabis farm there. So who's doing that then? Just people coming past and all unoccupied, yeah. throw stuff over the wall? Because there's mattresses, there's, there's everything. Christmas trees, you name it. I'd, I'd, I could probably find out who it belonged to because if we rifle through it. What's wrong with people? Oh, it's the, get rid of it. The council don't always take as much as what they need to get rid of. And it's like, well, oh. it's not their problem. That's my problem now. You know, I've now got to get skips and get this removed, which is eating away at our budget. You were telling me about the kitchen here, right? This was a fully fitted kitchen. It was. So what's, fitted what's happened kitchen. here? As people have got into it uh, and wrecked it, or? Yeah. Uh, as you can see here, they're broken. We've had to replace the door, replace all the fittings, everything. We actually took the boiler out so that they couldn't steal that, but we thought it would be okay and. Clearly it's not. We have to now put this all back together. What is wrong with people? A company kindly donated this full kitchen and it's trashed now. So we're going to have to restart this project all over again. It's terrible. We had all the new radiators in. If you look behind you, they're, they're off the walls, they're gone. Later that night, the hatred towards the homeless became very apparent. What the fuck just happened there? Was that meant for me? A car drove past and the passenger threw a glass bottle at me, hitting my security guy in the head as he tried to protect me. This incident has really unsettled me, so I decided to head back to my safe haven camp for the night to try and get some sleep. I've took the morning out to move away from the town centre, and head towards a more affluent area where the restaurants have chance to have thrown out some clean and in-date food. It's been more than a day since I had something to eat, so I have no options but to bin rummage. Hello, what a friendly natured little fella. Is it a fella? It wasn't long before it was time to head back to the town centre to be introduced to Jordan. I've been trying to get Jordan somewhere to stay. How are you getting on with that? Jordan, well, I'd be alright if Jordan would turn up. As a person, Jordan is someone who doesn't engage in conversation very much and he prefers the comfort of himself and not that of others. You've got, you've got an accent from Newcastle way. 
Sunderland. Sunderland. He's from uh, Outley Springs, man. Outley Spring, oh yeah. Aren't you, darling? Outley Spring. I suppose you're not going to make much wedge there, like, are you, really? Talking to Jordan, he's such a nice person who, through a situation that we all experience at times in our lives, has found himself homeless. What made you go homeless then? What? what? My mum kicked me out. Was it as simple as that? Um, he lived with his nana and granddad, didn't you, as well, until they passed away. Yeah. And then went and lived back with mum and them. Thank you, hon. Thank you very much. There we go, buddy. Put that in your thing. During my time on the streets, there's been some pretty extreme weather to deal with, and trying to stay out of it to keep warm and dry has been a challenge, as it has been for Jordan. What's it been like through the snow then for you? Horrible. So what have you been doing? Just keeping sheltered, like you're under, under. I suppose the God send that, like in it. So you're literally, you would class as fully homeless then, i.e., because some people I talk to and I've been talking to will come out during the day happen whatever they're going to do but then they've got a place to go on a night one thing is for certain the genuine homeless are up against it there's no doubt about that human compassion for people at times seems non-existent people are just certainly through COVID they're just uh, uh, the people are just not donating they're not well it doesn't help when the council put posters out all over Facebook in the papers and everything saying don't give money to homeless people have they read? Yeah, they have. Shifted, yes, they Yeah, they by have. The, by the air, the ticket man. Yeah. Has the, has the ticket people actually got authority to shift you on? I thought they were only car park people. I don't know. I think it's just with me doing this now, it's all about having, have, just having a bit of compassion and understanding. Because I didn't know what I was getting into when I purposely made myself homeless for this documentary. Right, on we go. Jordan is the first homeless person who I've talked to that wasn't using drugs or dependent on drink. He's a really nice person who I hope embraces the help he's being offered. I'm now off to meet Archie. Archie's been homeless for many years and he's a familiar face to many people from the town. You alright bud? I'll come, back, I'll, I'll come back and see you in a minute. The pattern I found with homeless people is they're on the streets for a period of time before disappearing off the radar, sometimes by purposely going off grid, going to prison, or even getting sorted with accommodation. Often though, it isn't long before the streets are calling them back again. Archie's no different, and I wanted to find out how long he's lived on the streets. Oh, no. Oh. 15 months. 15 years? Yeah. The longest I've been four years. Two and a half years. What were the circumstances of the major major one? Was it drugs? All drugs. Are you on drugs now? I'm on the uh, amphetamines and got pepper and blue. Oh yeah? Yeah. Just get around the world. Don't yeah. get to this shit now. Um, to a different place? Yeah. I need a different place. This this life is in a life. I don't, I don't so do you do you sleep rough as well, or have you got a place to go on a night? I can sleep rough, but I've got a place, but you've got to get money. Yeah. Just to sleep there at night, and look out. Turn there. Fuck that. You've got to sleep rough, but sleep warm. You've got to What's the public reaction? No. To you? No. More so COVID now, so there's not many people I around, is there? I don't get shit. You don't? No, because you don't get rid of your own life. Yeah, so you're you more of a character mean, around here, yeah, sort of thing, with it. Well, I've got manners. Do you manage to make yourself a few quid while yeah. like, down here? Yeah. People are generous, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've made 50 pence in about an hour and a half. 50 pence yeah. in an hour and a half, yeah? Yeah. 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 You get the car parked and send it to the check the meters. I'm not taking the money out to check them. They're scanning you, saying there's too many pounds. But that's where they've got extractors in here for, though? It's a limb, that. I was made aware of an issue Archie was having with his leg. Due to his circumstances of being homeless and the impact it was having on him being able to fully access the care system, 
What started as something very small became a very big issue, and what I seen next shocked me. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, exactly. Bloody hell. Are you getting that looked at? Yeah. Is that not so? Why don't you go to the hospital with that and just get... Bandage, stay there then. Then go to the hospital all day to get your own way up and come back now. Happening. You just want to look after yourself, bud. You you want to look after yourself with that. Yeah, just. I'm not thinking. Lose the leg. Yeah. I'm telling you, the pain's that bad. Is it really? Oh yeah, really. It's on my gut. It just came in the bowels. It's just like a rope. Yeah, it's all done. And it's fucking getting worse and worse. As you're saying there, there's no bit at all. Yeah, that yeah. I joined the end. I thought this. All the start right was little white. That, that was it. Come white it. I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe the pain. It's constant, it's always there telling me. So, what's your plan then on a day to day, right? You woke up today and said, to right, I'm coming down to my spot. Wherever, no, wherever, wherever's available, I'll sit there. Like, like you've got spots like mine's Mark's expensive. Someone turns up. If I turn up there, I go. Yeah, because it's not yours. That's it, that's the spec, you know me. Well, yes. Do you ever get, like I'm going to say, do you ever get a turf war sort of thing going oh, well, on? Well, I do. A lot of people are born in the moon, getting fucking knocked the foot open and still sit there. You know, it's that bad. My plan today is to make 35 quid and I'm gone. 35 quid and that's your day done. And what will you use that 35 quid on? So you're getting fed by the public, so will that be more that's drugs or? Yes, all drugs. So what will 35 quid buy you then? I don't know. If I, I need it, though, but yeah. I don't, so. Explodes, free gaps, and amphetamines. Skunk as well if I need to. If I can get all of it, I'll get that. You know what I mean? They'll get me a down. After spending time with Archie, and coupled with the way I've been feeling these last few days, I headed back to my camp to take a moment and just let it all out. I'm fucking sick of this. Absolutely fucking sick of it. After many weeks surviving homeless, this time out has made me realise my time living rough is almost over. The minute the cameras stopped filming you a month ago, how things have literally snowballed into this? Um, it's basically what it was, right? I've been there for a couple of months and like in Middlesbrough. Me, yeah, they, they see me as a good tenant in there, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. And they like me, and they were like, "Oh, we're going to put you in another property and all that." Anyway, the new landed, manager the land, came. Yeah, this new manager just took over. She's come in. She's watched me go out, yeah, and then she's like gone straight in my bedroom. But boom, she sat on the toilet, now on. She just like, walked she, in. She just walked in and she was like, listen, you're good enough to go, you know what I mean? Anyway, she, the vent up kicking us out. There was a little bit you of damage should, in the there's, room. There's no woman, no, and, and they were saying she shouldn't have been here, but I asked yeah. from day one, I was like, is, is Becca all right? Come right, like, listen, as long as there's no trouble, you can have your partner around, you know what I mean? But she and just then, decided that she wouldn't demand there and then. And she wasn't the having that, was she? I tried talking to her, didn't I? He tried talking to her, but she said literally, it's there and then. That was it, right there. Not a day, not, not a few hours, there and then, out. Literally, I'm sat there with all my bags, rang Jamie, 
I was like, Jamie, I'm getting kicked out. She was like, right, I'll be there in half an hour. I'm coming to get you. Well, within half an hour, Lisa and Jamie were there. Well, bags in, are you? And it's, and it's that's it, and absolute it's, well, whirlwind. Within 24 hours, the house is chocker. There's everything, everything we need. We've got everything so, that we've never had in our lives, you know, we've got it together. So it's a good start for you, really, isn't it? Oh, yeah. well, I. Community spirit. We're going to grab it, you know what I mean? We it's an opportunity, and we're going to grab it. It's an opportunity, yeah. You've, you've, you've both had your demons, and you admit it, Anka. Oh, yeah. well, I. You've had, you've had your demons, you've worked through it. This is the first step in the future chapter of your life. Well, I. Yeah. Sounds a cliche, but it's that's, that's of course crazy. it is. Yeah, but it's and happening, isn't it? Look, it's happening. It's yeah. like, well, I'm blown away, mate. And you've got a good support network, I think, around you, um, from what I've seen with Jamie's organisation. I mean, you ask Jamie something and say you've got a problem, and it's fixed within the hour. Yeah. It's like whoa. Uh, any problem, isn't it? Any problem, and she does that it. woman she does and it. her team, Lisa. Wow, they're all, they're all amazing. You know, they're absolutely all amazing. Do you know what? Pleasure seeing you two again. Honestly, it is. You're, you're two good eggs, you two. <laughs> and I tell you what, I'm going to keep following up on you. Will I? Yeah. Will I? You can't escape me because I live in Hartlepool. <laughs> we'll see you about. So where's Martin and Becca now? They're actually at the Wells Pharmacist at the end of the road going to collect their methadone prescription. Um, when we relocated them to here, the first thing that we did was make sure that everything was put in place. And then they go in, they have a telephone assessment with them just to make sure that they're still meeting all of their needs and they're getting the right uh, amount of methadone. Do they need to adjust it? Do they need to um, have uh, samples? Because sometimes they need to put, uh, produce samples to make yeah. sure they are staying clean. Probation wise, obviously, because they've been in trouble in other towns, has, has all of that sorted itself through here as well? Yeah, is if you actually look over there, Martin's actually on a tag. That is his mobile device that's actually plugged in, and we facilitated that that same night he moved from there to here. Martin's tag that he's got, it's not like a normal tag. The, his tag actually restricts him from going to a certain area. Another tag is where it actually monitors where you go. That telephone is his device for the probation officer and the tagging people to be able to get hold of him. He has to be in this property from 10 p.m. at night and that'll tell him if he's not his, ta his tag and they'll ring him on that. If he doesn't answer that on the first phone call, the first time they ring, they'll send the police here to come and arrest him. He's actually at court on Tuesday, which we're supporting him with as well. Excellent. It's about giving them the full wraparound support that they need. So we've tied in with his probation officer, John, really lovely guy. Um, he's back in work on Monday, so we're ringing him on Monday, ready for his court on Tuesday. So there'll be myself as his support and his probation officer will be there. We've also tied in with his solicitor to make sure that, because obviously he's moved from one location to the next, they had to get an emergency uh, court order put in place because he's moved from one area to another to get the tag reinstated again so then he's not breaching his, uh, his conditions. Um, and it's been working really, really well. Everyone's like, wow, how fantastic this is. It's like bang, bang, bang. This is done, that's done, that's done. And it's just continuous. We've sorted out doctors, we've sorted out his methadone scripts, we've sorted out his tenancy, we've sorted out actually speaking to the council to get his council tax and all them bills sorted out. On Monday we're also uh, linking in with the uh, utility warehouse to get all of his utility bills put together as one bill that comes out. Instead of having four or five different bills, we're going to have one bill throughout the month. It's making it work for us, but at the same time having that knock-on effect of cheaper utilities for the client that we're working with. Excellent. Manageable. Excellent. My time on the streets has now come to an end, and it's important I reflect on the last six weeks and the people I've met, their situations, their stories, and the daily struggle you face when you're homeless. I'm 
not going to pretend it's been easy going because it hasn't. I'm lucky that I've got a home to come back to. If there's one thing I can take away from the experience of being homeless, it's having an appreciation of people on the streets and their determination to survive another day.